Hello YouTube, in this hypertrophy series we're going to discuss reps in reserve and its impact on programming and muscle building as a whole, especially for quality tonnage accumulation. So I have a video in the natural bodybuilding playlist about reps in reserve where I go into the technical aspects of it and the philosophical aspects of it because I do think it's a philosophical practice just as much as a physical one. But today I'm going to talk about raw numbers and the impact it has on you. So I personally am a proponent of the reps in reserve technique, especially for strength work. I think that if you're pushing the pedal to the metal and you're really going 100% with as many reps as you can and you go to failure with maximum weight when you open the workout, you should be shaving one rep out of every single set because that rep could be the extra rep that gets you injured. And that is a practice that I apply for my own longevity, meaning that I have found that by doing this, I have reduced the amount of injuries I've occurred on my strength work, and it's almost at 0% now. So it's something that I want to share with you guys. That being said, I cannot honestly say and state that it doesn't have maluses, that it doesn't have its bad sides. And the bad sides are fairly obvious. You're shaving off the one rep that in reality represents the higher intensity, meaning that if you do a rep, a set of five, and you do reps in reserve with one rep, you get four. That fifth rep, if you had gotten it, would have been the closest to 100% intensity. And if it was performed, it would have been the higher quality tonnage in that set. So that's a sacrifice. And when you program, when you train, you're going to have to make sacrifices. I'm going to explain why that's a sacrifice worth making. Yes, this is the highest intensity rep of the set. And yes, it's tonnage that you're leaving on the table because you're not going through that rep. Issue is... By virtue of it being almost 100% intensity, it also means that it's the rep that's the closest to failure and it's the rep that is, that is the closest to actually failing, meaning that you could miss that rep. It sometimes is a 50-50. And I can tell you that nothing kills a session more than failing a rep. For your physical and mental stamina, it is something you want to avoid. If you fail reps repeatedly, there is an issue with your program. You're failing to program because you need to avoid it. You train to failure, but it's short of failure. You never fail. You never want to fail in the gym. It also builds a loser's mindset because that, that weight is going to start to scare you because you're going to be afraid of it in a sense. And if you fail, your rep counts. If you fail to lift a weight again and again and again, you're creating mental plateaus that didn't exist in the first place that are going to manifest in the physical realm. So that's one argument for reps in reserve. Yes, you could have gotten that, that rep. You could have. But you know what? Not getting it is more beneficial for you in the long term. Because as I explained in the previous video about reps in reserve, yeah, you might have left, I don't know, 300 foreign pounds of high quality tonnage on the table. Sure. But look at it in the long run. Maybe that rep, you got it this time, but you failed the next time. And now you're within a two weeks plateau or you're not getting as much tonnage. You might have gotten injured that completely sabotaged your tonnage. All of that means what? All of that means that that reps in reserve practice for strength work means that you're investing in the long term. So you might be outdone by someone who always goes balls to the walls, but in the long run, you're going to overtake them every single time. That, of course, is only with reps in reserve with one rep. This is what I preach. One rep, not two, not three, not four. One, you cannot do more than one because you understand that the more reps you leave in the tank, the more exponential the tonnage loss is. One rep is already a loss. Two reps is two times that loss and more than two times because in reality, the, the rep that was before the last rep that you shaved is also the higher intensity rep in the set. So if you do seven reps and you shave three, these are the three most important. You can do without the last one, but not the last three. It's not possible. It's too much of a sabotage. So if you need to take all of these reps in reserve, to me, it has one of two meanings. One, your weight selection is not right. Two, your sandbagging. And if you're sandbagging, that's fine. Because it just means that you don't care about that tonnage. It's for a muscle group that you don't really want to grow right now. And so you do reps in reserve. And in reality, what you're doing is those extra reps that you don't really want to have in terms of actual tonnage in your training, in your results, you're going to redirect somewhere else. That's the principles of tonnage sacrifice. That's the principles of sandbagging, which is a, which is a, which is a way to apply tonnage sacrifice. 
it means that that effort is applied somewhere else. It's prioritized somewhere else. And that's entirely fine. Don't worry about that. But you need to know that. So if you leave one rep in the tank, that's fine for strength work. If you leave more, you're sandbagging. Keep that in mind. Sandbagging means you're not going to progress as fast. I will argue that reps in reserve allow you to progress faster. Because if you're always leaving a rep in the tank, that rep in actuality is yours to get. You could have gotten it, but you didn't. And some people will tell you, well, that's hurting you because that rep would have helped you move to another rep range or another weight. I would say no, because that's the rep that, unless you are already sandbagging that lift, would be the least technical rep, would be the one you grind the most, would be the one where foam breakdown occurs, and that is just not conducive to progression. You will find that because you have that rep that it was yours, you also build a mental strength of knowing I could have gotten more. And therefore, next week when you need five, you can think back of this week where you had four and you're like, I got four. I could have gotten five. So five next week is going to be a walk in the park and it will. So that's what I preach. That's what I uh, advise you to do in this hypertrophy series. That being said, outside of strength work, which is the opening of the workout, reps in reserve shouldn't be applied. Meaning that for all of your accessories, for all of your volume, you go all the way. You complete the reps all the way and you go one rep before failure. So no reps in reserve. You have to modify the rep ranges so that you always are that close to failing on your last rep. That's important and the reasoning behind that is because you're going to use much less weight on your volume and accessories. You're going to use, for the most part, lifting variations that are going to be less important in terms of tonnage moved. So in reality, what's going to happen is the set multiplication is going to be much greater. So if you do strength work and you do three sets of strength work, you shave one rep off each, each time. That's three reps. So sure, it's a lot of weight because it's strength work. Now look at your sets and accessories. Let's say after the three sets of strength work, you get eight sets of something else and you shave a rep each time. Even if you move much less weight on these, that's more than twice the reps you left in reserve. But for something that has zero interest, because look at what volume and accessory tend to be. They tend to be lower in risk. They tend to be in a lower in risk injury window. So you don't need that practice. That practice loses its meaning. So you go to failure for everything else. That's going to be that for reps in reserve. If you want to discuss it, let me know. I encourage you to try that practice because it's actually quite smart and makes sense for programming. Have a good day.